Y'all, Wizard 101 just updated all of their newest spells, and some of these changes are crazy. We need to talk about this, because some of this stuff introduces mechanics into the game that we've never seen before. But the spells that we're talking about today are the Wallaroo spells. So here's the deal, right? They teased a bunch of upcoming Spellman Pats to all of the new AoEs. There's one for every school. And all of these Wallaroo spells, in Live Realm anyways, have one thing in common. They use a school pip from another school, and they just, they're AoEs. They hit everybody. What all the new Spellman Pats do is, they still keep the fact that they use a new school pip, but they use this new mechanic where the damage drops off as you target more people with the spell, which is really relevant, right? Because that means as a single target spell, they operate like regular single target spell. And you also have the ability to use them on multiple targets. Some of these are crazy, so let's jump right into it. So what you see on your screen is the first of seven spells that are getting changed just from the Wallaroo spells. And this one's crazy. It's Drop Air Fury. This is a myth spell that uses a fire pit, but the utility that it's gonna give myth is not. So what this basically does is it hits while clearing shield. The only other spell in the game that does this is Heliphant. Right now, if you wanted to counter shields on a mid, you would have to go a pretty different route, right? You would have to use something like Minotaur, which does hit and clear shields. But one, it only clears shields that are remaining after the hit. And two, it doesn't use the shields for more damage. It just turns them into trap. What the upcoming Drop Air Fury is going to do, it hits for over 500. And then for each shield that it counters, it basically creates an overtime that it hits every round that does 85 damage per shield clear. Now that might be a mouthful, but basically what this is, is it's a new hit that hits through shields. And if your opponent has four shields, it can do nearly 900 damage on a myth. What's also very relevant is it's not like other myth overtimes that detonate in five rounds. It hits every round. As of all of that, wasn't enough. Apparently, what I've been told is if it clears three shields, it just creates one overtime. But once you hit that fourth shield, apparently it creates a second overtime. Meaning, let's say that someone were to shield four times against you, you could automatically use a spell like Trickstaroni, which does extra damage if your opponent has two overtimes. It's kind of nuts because this would introduce to Myth a way to literally hit through shields turn shields into damage, and also have an overtime gambit setup. It's kind of just a lot. Out of all the spells you'll see in this video, I think this one is the most game-changing. Let's hope it doesn't literally break the game. Moving on to life. What you see on your screen is the updated spellman pad that they're going to be giving life. And this one is kind of weird. Like, obviously, right, this spell requires a storm pip to cast, so I think they're trying to bring in storm identity. But I almost feel like a, a, a storm would use this spell way, way better than a life ever would. So the way this works is it gives you a 70% blade for storm per heal that you have on yourself. It's pretty simple, but the damage is pretty low. It's not something that you really would want to use five pips on as a storm, much less a life because you're not getting life blades for it. I'm gonna be honest. I don't really see why these blades couldn't have been blades that are based on your school. If you're gonna bring in like storm identity, why not make it chromatic blades, right? Why not make it 70 blade based on the school of the caster per heal on some? Then a fire could use it by healing, a storm could use it, a life could use it. Then I feel like, you know, that'd be kind of cool. Otherwise, this spell's pretty underwhelming. I don't think it's gonna do anything new for life that it can't already do when you have multiple heals on yourself. Now, death is where it gets interesting. What you see on your screen is a new Wabagong Frenzy. It uses an ice pip, so keep that in mind. That's not a pip that a lot of deaths would even think about using, but it's a really, really powerful utility. One, it hits for 500 damage, which for a 5 pip spell, I would say is actually pretty good. I'd say Headless Horseman is still a better bang for your buck because it does a double weakness for just a little less damage, and it's still 5 pips, right? It's a depth pip instead of like an ice pip, but it's pretty good compared, in my opinion, to the damage part of the spell. But that's not why the spell is so good. The utility is what's nuts. It clears up to three blades on your opponent, and for each blade cleared, it gives you a tower shield. And I'm gonna be honest, this spell is a pretty universal way to defend yourself the fact that now you have a way to turn blades into automatic defense it's pretty damn good now i would call this kind of nuts but banshee is actually getting nerfed in in test realm so when this goes live what this spell will do is it will still clear blades but it just replaces blades with infects not damage weaknesses like it does right now in other words as a death of someone blades you don't really have a way at low pips to defend yourself you would have to go all the way up to seven pips in order to defend yourself with the new Scarecrow. So the new Wabagong Frenzy spell, I guess it's cool because now for five pips, you can basically hit, you can do a little bit of damage, you can get defended right out of it, you can remove blade. It's a really, really solid mid-range hit. Is it gonna be better than Scarecrow? We'll see. Scarecrow is basically what Banshee is now. 
turns blades into damage weaknesses. It's really, really good because it's a drain as well. So I don't know if this is going to be better than the upcoming Scarecrow. Now, Balance is an actual doozy. So this spell does 600 damage if you single target with it. That's kind of crazy considering that most 5 pip spells, for Balance anyways, they do about 500 damage. Judgment being a good example of that. The only spell that somewhat competes in damage to this new, you know, Rainbow Serpent spell that's coming is Ninja Piglets, but it doesn't have any utilities added onto it. Now, the spell is super complicated don't get too crazy with it if you're like intimidated because they're gonna be adding spell inspect soon so you know people will be able to know what these spells do better but basically not only does it do 600 damage but it's also essentially a heal counter and it does an effect per heal on your opponent up to two heals if your opponent has one heal it does a 60 blade on yourself and a 60 weakness on your opponent and the catch is these are school specific now for a balance school specific stuff works a little different blades that are chromatic which are school specific they tend to be weaker if you cast this as a balance your blade is probably not going to be 60. now in an ideal world if someone were to do a double heal you would basically be doing 600 damage and you'd get two blades on yourself and two school specific weaknesses on your opponent you might be wondering why double heals are even a part of the convo because if you do live round pvp you probably don't see double heals that much you probably see people single healing a lot over a large period of time but basically what they've done in test realm is the more powerful a heal is especially with the new balancing system that they've done the more copies of heals it puts on you so regenerate berry surprise pigsy these are all spells that are gonna heal with two heal over times on self and considering the best counter that you have right now as a balance anyways only affects one heal and it swaps them meaning if someone were to double heal yes you can steal the first one you can't steal the second one because it will just swap the previously stolen heal considering that that's your best counter the fact that now we have a double heal counter actually a pretty big deal for balance i'd say this spell is so devastating that healing is just going to be weak against balance it might be the one thing that it counters even better than death and storm maybe and what i like about it is it's countering it in its own way there's like pip stuff they're swapping stuff there's other school pip stuff it's pretty cool what they're doing with balance definitely a hard hitter by itself so i would consider keeping this in your deck if you want a really hard hitting spell ice didn't really get a crazy change in my opinion and this is yet another example of a spell that it seems to be better for the school that the school pip is rather than the actual card but what this card does based on what you see on your screen anyways it hits for a very weak 400 ish and then it turns shields on self into myth traps on your opponent if this spell looks familiar it basically does exactly what colossus does except now it's myth traps and they're way better than the ice traps you would have gotten they are changing colossus so that it no longer does what it does it does something a little bit different it works with weaknesses on your opponent now instead of shields on self but considering that this spell is making myth traps i don't recommend using this on an ice i barely recommend even trying to use this on a myth because it's just a waste of pip now fire is one of the spells with a completely new mechanic that they're adding into the game this is a heal activate that also buffs the value of the heal so we have seen heal activates this is basically a way to just get all of your healing up front if you have a heal over time on yourself they're not really used that much because if you're gonna get the heal anyways the only reason you'd want to activate the heal is so that your opponent doesn't counter it so it's a little bit more situational than something that would boost the heal like the spell that you see right now i might be reading the card wrong but it hits for a good bit and basically it's also a trap counter and what i want to say is that for each trap that you counter it basically boosts a heal on yourself more what i think the spell says is that if you have three traps on yourself and a heal on yourself and you use this you'll get rid of the traps and detonate that heal on yourself with a 75% boost. That sounds really, really powerful, but keep in mind, how often are you going to have traps and a heal on yourself and a life pip on a fire? And finally, we have Bunyip's Rage. Now, this spell hits like a goddamn brick if it's a single target. It is literally more powerful than Catalan, but I guess you would want to use it if you fulfill its condition better. And yes, this is yet another new mechanic, probably a symbol that we've, I don't know, I've never seen it before. But basically what it does is it hits and it clears heal on opponents and for each heal cleared it basically makes a more and more powerful aura on your opponent that hurts them now a harmful aura this isn't something that i've ever seen them really play around with this is just a whole new mechanic altogether but what i assume is if it's one heal it's a minus 25 healing aura on opponents
opponent, and if it's two heals you're clearing, then it's a minus 50. And also what's worth noting is if the opponent has an aura when they're, you know, getting the spell cast on them, it's probably also going to replace that aura. So you could do damage, clear heals, break an aura on your opponent, and also prevent them from healing all in one turn. This could be one of the highest utility heal counters we've ever seen on any school. Until I saw the spell, I was pretty convinced that Rainbow Serpent was the best heal counter in the game at 5 pips. But I would say that this spell is a real, it makes a good argument against it. And you also get a ton of damage, which I think makes it just worth packing as a hit as well. Let me know what you guys think of all of these spells. Which ones do you plan on using? Which ones do you think are underwhelming? Which ones do you think might be broken? I look forward to reading all of y'all's comments. Y'all wanted me to talk about these, talk about what they did, what effect they might have on each school's toolkit. So I hope I did that. I look forward to reading all of y'all's comments. I'll see y'all soon. Stay awesome, y'all. And yeah, yeah.